Well, hello, hello, Facebook. It is Melissa from the Top Drawer RVA hopping on on this Tuesday morning to talk about some new products that Dixie Belle is now carrying on their website. If you've been following me for a little while, you know that I've been using these cute little molds. So on my furniture, I like to dress things up. I like to get crazy, I like to get fancy. And if that means that I have to add um, little moldings or little keyholes for repair or different things, I do it. So right now, Dixie Belle has partnered with a company called Would You Bend. I'm sure that you've heard of Would You Bend because all the ladies seem to be talking about it lately, but I thought what better time for me to get on here rather than do my prep work by myself, I will bring you along for the journey and also talk about the no pain gel stain. So Would You Bend. Would You Bends are a 3D molding. You can see this really close. It's the same color as wood because it is made from wood. This is actually a wood fiber made into a mold shape that you would then purchase and it would come pre-made. So you no longer have to pour your resin, you no longer have to buy molds. You're basically gonna just go on the website, which the link is above my head. If you wanted to order a mold, you can just order exactly what you want there. So, Would You Bend is a bendable, stainable, sandable molding. And I have big plans for this. See this ugly cabinet? <laughs> this cabinet, this sad little cabinet. Um, I tend to buy things at auction, and a lot of times when I buy things at auction, I get them sight unseen. So, did not know, I love a cabinet. I love doors, I love storage. I buy all the little boxes that I can. Did not know that this little, this little box is actually giant. It's actually an old TV cabinet. I can open it for you later. I'm gonna get down below and uh, show you a little bit about this piece. It's basically a full square on top. It's as wide as it is, you know, deep. So, I was stuck. Like, what do I do to this sad, sad little cabinet? First of all, I cleaned it with my white lightning. I then gave it a light scuff and I filled the hardware holes. They are not filled neatly because I'm gonna be doing some 3D painting and you all are gonna come along for the ride. Um, you've seen me do my watercolor roses. Well, this is going to be watercolor, metallic, drippy, 3D angelings. So my daughter and I went to see Maleficent 2 yesterday, which was amazing, super, super good movie. And now I'm obsessed with all things flying. I wish I had wings. So because wings are on my brain and I didn't know what to do to this, my rule of thumb is the more weird a piece of furniture is, the stranger shape, the weirder it looks, the weirder I'm gonna paint it. <laughs> it's not gonna be boring in beige and farmhouse. It's gonna be fabulous and drippy gold and metallics. I'm gonna do this in like a three part series because I can't do it all at one time, but I'm even going to incorporate music note paper in a Mod Podge fashion, cut out into feathers. Um, I'm going to do all sorts of crazy things. So I thought I would bring you along the journey. So let's get back to project at hand. Would you bend? And I see somebody on there. Oh, well, wonderful, great. I'm glad, you know what? Would you bend is kind of like my new favorite thing. So Cynthia's saying she loves to see what I'm gonna do with the would you bend. Here's my plan and I drew this out so that you could kind of see. Can you see in this light? This is a, a kind of a mock-up of an angel wing, okay? My plan is to take each door and make each door an angel wing. Angel wing this way, angel wing this way. I don't even want to call them angel wings. I just want to call them Maleficent wings because I'm, I'm totally obsessed with that. That movie is just stuck in my head. So I thought these little scrolly pieces would be a great addition to my angel wings. If the angel wings start here, come up and go down to the bottom, this is going to give me more depth, more texture, and I'm all about art on furniture. And art on furniture means depth, textures, drips, gold, paper, all of the things all of the time. Super extra, super like me. So I'm gonna show you how to do a you bend molding. And this is gonna be a little noisy, but we're gonna do it together so that you can see. You're gonna need a hair dryer, or you're going to need like a hot plate, or you're going to need something, a heat gun, something that you can use to heat this up, okay? My plan, and don't make fun of my sad looking wood glue with the lost lid. <laughs> this is legit how I roll. Everything has no lids. Everything is messy and crazy. And this still works if I stick an old paintbrush in it. So we have wood glue, we have tape, we have my wood you bend molding, and we have a hair dryer. And we're gonna get noisy because you're gonna see what happens. So if you could see it close up, you will notice that this is actually not completely flat. I did have them in the shed and it was hot out there. So they kind of are a malleable surface when they heat up 
and it became a little bit warped a little bit bent. I'm going to take my hair dryer, this is where the noise comes in, I'm going to heat it up. I'm going to make this hot and I'm going to put my wood glue on here and I'm going to adhere it to the front of this piece. Remember this is going to be part of my angel wings, alright? So hang tight, get noisy, here we go. Make a mess, obviously, because what would it be if it wasn't messy? Art is messy and fun. I've sanded and cleaned my surface before I'm doing this, okay, you guys? This is not done on naked wood. This is a sanded, clean surface. I then am going to hold it here where I want it to go, and I'm going to hit it again with the hairdryer, okay? Because I want it to be stuck on here, but I also want it to be flat to the surface. And your surface might not always be completely flat. So this is going to ensure that it is flat to the surface. Here we go again, getting noisy. Okay, once I know that it's flattened to my surface, I want to make sure that it stays there, doesn't slide down, because this table is laying upright, not down flat. So I'm just going to give it a light tape just to hold it where I want it to go. All right, there you go. So now, when I do my angel wing, which will start here, come up, over, and down the middle, and I'm debating even dragging it on the sides. You never know what could happen when I get crazy in here. But this is all that it takes to adhere your wood glue to your piece. Um, again, generic wood glue, nothing fancy, a hair dryer, some tape, and your wood you bend. Now this button, if you notice, is a lot more bent. If you have this on a flat surface, not flat, okay? I'm gonna heat it up and we're gonna do the same thing to the other side, okay? Here we go. what the rule of thumb is for how long you're supposed to heat it up until. I just do it until I can feel the mold start to move a little bit in my hand. And then I'm going to take it, place it on, make sure I get it in the spot that I want, make sure they're both around the same, not going to matter because this is art. Okay, and I'm going to hit it again with my hair dryer to make sure it's flat to the surface of the dresser. Take my shape. I'm going to make sure again that I've got it in the same spots. And I'm going to see that I have this over a little bit more. Tape it down. Taking it down is just ensuring me that while it sits here and gets dry with the glue, it's going to stay flat without sliding down the surface. So if I were to have a bunch of molds, if I had flower molds and I was making like a garden or a larger project where I had more than one. I most likely would take a hot plate um, and use that because I think that that would be a lot easier way for you to lay your molds down. Maybe even like warm up like a, like a pizza stone and lay your pizza stone down and put your molds on top because then they're going to stay warm, they're going to stay malleable. You're going to be able to keep many pieces warm like you need it. So there you go. This is the start of my angel wings. Obviously can't start painting yet because I'm going to have to wait for these to dry. But I also need to sit on the floor and cut out some music paper feathers because I think I'm going to mod podge feathers in as I paint just to be extra, you know, just to be crazy. So once again, if you want to try the Would You Bend moldings, they are now available as of yesterday on the Dixie Bow website. All you need to do is click on the little link that's above my head. That will take you directly to the website um, and you're going to be able to see the molds that are available. I think even yesterday, the first day they were up, some of them were getting sold out already. Um, they are fabulous. Like, I mean, the things you can do, the art and the creations you can make, I've seen people do 
fabulous canvas. I've seen people take mannequins and do full on dresses and clothes and gorgeous fashion with them. It's, it's amazing. So this is pretty cool. So this is one thing that I wanted to show you was would you bend moldings? The second thing that I want to show you today, because Dixie Bell re-released their no pain gel stain, this is a staple um, for me as a furniture painter. No pain gel stain lets me fix and make all the things pretty without having to do a ton of work. Okay, normally if you're using a regular stain, you would have to sand your surface down to the original wood, and then you're going to have to use a wood conditioner. You're then going to have to use a stain and then you're going to have to seal it somehow. When I do my gel stain, your gel stain, once you clean and sand your surface very lightly, just in the direction of the wood grain, just to prep your wood, okay? All I did was take off a sticker that was on here. I made sure that some of the little divots were sanded out and even. I made sure there were no rough edges and I cleaned it very well. I'm going to show you how to apply your no pain gel stain, all right? And this is gonna cut me off, but this is gonna bring you closer to the piece that you can see how this really works. And I would actually do this with um, two coats if necessary, but you know what, until you start and you put it on your wood, you can't even really tell how it's going to cover. Some woods absorb more and make it darker, make it a thicker coverage. The espresso color itself is, um, let's see if I can open this, yikes. The espresso color itself is very dark, okay? And I like a dark finish. I like a deep walnut color. I don't want it to be light. And nine tenths out of ten, the pieces that I buy are like this sad little cabinet um, and are damaged and dinged up. So putting this on darker lets me hide all of the little boo-boos, okay? This is a really clever disguise and it's very easy. So here's the deal. I'm in my living room, well, actually my dining room, and you know I'm going to get stuff all the places where I don't want it. So I'm going to try to do this as mess, not messy as possible. What's nice about the gel stain is that it's thicker. It's like a pudding-like consistency. So when you actually do apply it, it's not wet and splashy. It's not getting everywhere. But definitely wear gloves because you will never have a pretty manicure ever again. It gets right in all the nails. It never comes out. Wear a glove. I order mine on Amazon. They're um, like six bucks for like a giant pack of... 500. You can get a ton. All right, I'm going to bring you in closer so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. All right, push the chair out of the way and bring the camera in. All right, so now you are closer. And I told you I was going to make a mess. I literally just knocked over my glue. <laughs> because what would it be on the Melissa show if there wasn't a giant mess somewhere? Okay, here we go. T shirt like red. This is literally a t shirt that I've cut up had a hole in it and saved it. I've got my glove on. I've got my no pain gel stain and espresso. The new cans are actually a smaller size, which is better, I think, because if you don't put lids on well and tight like me, it's gonna get dried out. You've got your consistency of like a pudding, and this is exactly what I do. And you guys are gonna be shocked at how easy this is. So I'm gonna dip it in to my no pain gel stain. See it? It's thick, it's viscous, it's a lot like pudding. The surface has been clean and it's been given a light sand and it's ready. All right, you're gonna take it and you're gonna wipe this on in the direction of the wood grain. Keep it in direction of the wood grain because I like to have a little bit of wood grain still showing through. This lets you do it smoothly, keeps it uniform and still when you see wood peeking through, it looks like a regular stain. All I'm doing is wiping back and forth. I do like to go in and do my edges first. I don't know, that's just me. I like to always do the edges first. And this way, when you come right around the top, you're able to keep it a little bit smoother. All I've done is dip it in there. Look, what have I done? I've dipped it in maybe twice. I'm wiping on in the direction of the wood grain. Okay, so as of right now, my little sides, are done. Can you see how the color has changed from this really red, old, gross wood to this beautiful, dark espresso color? This is how you get that nice, walnutty look, that deep look. If you want to add two coats, you can. If you want to keep it lighter and have the wood grain showing through more, one coat is adequate. By using a rag, I can wipe off the excess. 
I'm not wasting by putting it on a brush, brushing it on and wiping it off. I'm keeping it simple because this is the way that it goes for me. I'm keeping it simple. All right, I'm going to bring you in really close so you can see the difference. Actually, maybe I could just tip this piece of furniture. Oh, that's going to be a disaster. I'll bring you in closer. So you can see now the difference. See that back piece that has the dark red wood? Okay, you're going to take that red wood and you're changing it to a beautiful deep espresso color. As simple as that. I like two coats. So once this first coat dries, because it does dry fairly quickly, especially since I'm inside, I'm able then to come in with my second coat, wipe it on directly over top of this first coat, and it's gonna let me hide all of the ugly brown, kind of reddish color wood that was there that I'm not a fan of. Uh, I don't mind oak, but I don't like red. Red I find clashes in a neutral home, and nine times out of ten people have neutral houses now. The pink colors are neutral gray, grayish, beige, they don't want red. So this has allowed me now to come in, hide all of that horrible wood by wiping on my gel stain, keeping it simple. This is not hard, you guys. You can totally do this. All you're literally doing is wiping it on in the direction of the wood grain, and you are done. All right? So that is it for me for now because I need to wait for my Would You Bend moldings to dry. I'm going to wait for this to dry and then come in and do a second coat because I actually want it darker. And you're able to see the difference between this beautiful espresso color and this red wood that originally was, all done with no paint gel stain which again is in the new formula and the cute little cans and in new colors, all linked on the Dixie Bell website. The link is directly above this photo, this video, above my head, and you can order your own. And it's honestly, you guys, I don't even think I'll do a second coat. I kind of am digging the lightness of the wood with the wood grain. So simple. How easy was that? So give it a try. This is uh, not a hard thing to do but it dresses up the piece a lot. And because the base of this piece is gonna be drippy and metallic and neutrals, I wanted the top of it, I'm gonna cross in front and make sure I got my whole corner. I wanted the top of it to look classy. And you don't get classier than a gorgeous espresso finish. All right, to seal this, you have a couple options. Some people don't seal it, I always do, because it's usually on the top of the table. I like a clear coat and a satin finish. Okay, gives you a little bit of shine, lets you still see the wood through and gives the protection that it needs. You can use gator hide, you can use whatever you wish. So I am going to get off now because I can't get any further than this. I've applied my Would You Bend moldings with wood glue, a hair dryer, and tape. I've filled holes because the original hardware was in the middle. I've sanded and scuffed my surface. I've now applied my beautiful espresso gel stain onto the top of this project. And when you come back, you are going to join me on a painting adventure today. You are gonna be able to join me paint some angel wings, some maleficent wings, some uh, fun and art on furniture, which is my favorite. So I hope everybody's having a great day. Stay tuned. I definitely need to break this up because I want these to be dry. And I'm not gonna lie, I'll probably sit on the floor and just dry them with my hair dryer. <laughs> because I can't wait for glue to dry. I can't wait for paint to dry and I can't wait for glue to dry. Super annoying. All right, so everybody take care once again. Melissa from the Top Drawer RVA. The RVA stands for Richmond, Virginia area. I am always available to answer all of your questions. And I think that you all should go and order yourself some, some brand new Would You Bend molding and some gel stain because it's only gonna make your life easier. Trust me. All right, you take care and I will be back later.